All right, so this is what the question says. It says, consider a positive charge um, of some magnitude. Let me draw that. So I have some charge Q1 fixed at the origin um, with another positive charge, okay, Q2, um, of magnitude moving near it. Charge Q2, it has some mass, M2. Uh, where applicable, let the potential energy be zero when charged. Yeah, this is uh, explicitly telling you to use this uh, potential energy or electric potential convention where you say electric potential as R goes to infinity is zero. Um, it's good that they let us use this because one of the expressions that we'll be using for electric potential, um, that is electric potential of a point charge, is equal to Coulomb constant times the charge divided by R. This expression is assuming this convention. So uh, without the convention, uh, it's going to get more complicated. So, uh, so we are going to assume that anyway, but it's good to have uh, explicit permission. Um, OK, so it asks, what is the potential energy of Q2 when it is uh, 3.6 centimeters from Q1? So in answering this question, you are, um, you are looking at an interaction between two charges, Q1 and Q2. And let me get into this uh, practice of going through the intermediate device of electric potential. Similar to how a week or so ago, we went through the intermediate device of electric field in order to calculate uh, electric forces on different things. Once you figure out the electric field, then uh, getting to electric force is really simple uh, because you just multiply it by the test charge, then boom, you get the force. So we're going to do something similar here. We are first going to consider this uh, charge Q1 and the electric potential the charge Q1 generates in the space around it. So we have an expression for that. That's what I was just writing down. The electric potential of a point charge is given by this expression. So we can simply say that at a distance of 3.6 meters, sorry, 3.6 centimeters, the charge Q1 generates this potential. The potential due to charge Q1 at the distance of 3.6 centimeters is equal to Coulomb constant times the charge Q1. This is the potential due to Q1 divided by R, uh, or I guess where R, R is, that should be 3.6 centimeters if you are plugging in R equals 3.6 centimeters. Um, now the question doesn't ask what is the potential, it asks what is the potential energy. And there's this relationship between electric potential energy and electric potential, or as I like to call it, voltage. And uh, that's what we are going to rely on here. The electric potential energy is given by the voltage times the test charge. In this case, the test charge would be Q2. So, so uh, from here, uh, so where it asks for the electric potential energy, it would be simply the potential uh, V of uh, V due to Q1 at R equals to 3.6 centimeter times charge of Q2. That's it. And I think we are going to get a positive. Um, yeah, we are going to get a, a positive potential energy. And what that means is the potential energy at this point is uh, higher than the potential energy at infinity away. So this charge Q2 will tend to move from this position of higher potential to the position of lower potential. And I hope that makes sense, um, you know, positive charges to repel. Um, so let's see here. Yeah. Now, so you have another question that's similar to this question where the only difference is that instead of having a single source charge, you are dealing with a multiple, well, two source charges. In that case, really the only change you need to make is how you calculate the total potential. 
So here I didn't bother with the total potential because I have only one source charge. When you have multiple source charges, you for the total um, electric potential, you simply add those various contributions together. And the rest of the dynamical calculation, like calculating the potential energy and calculating the kinetic energy, all those steps will be identical. That is really the advantage of um, testing this question in terms of electric potential and going through this intermediary of electric potential. It really uh, helps to standardize problem solving approach here. So let me finish this up. Um, so for the potential energy, let me plug in the numbers. I can use Wolfram Alpha to do this uh, relatively quickly and you know not uh, spend a lot of time looking for constants and whatnot. So this is going to be charge Q2, 7 micro coulomb times uh, the expression I had for voltage at this distance, coulomb constant times the Q1, which is oh another 7 uh, micro coulomb uh, divided by 3.6 centimeter. I'm just gonna let uh, Wolfram Alpha do all the unit conversion and all the stuff that that I feel is too tedious for me. <laughs> all right, so I get the answer in joules. Okay, 12.2 joules. That should be it. Yeah. Now for part B, uh, we um. For part B, uh, we use conservation of energy because this is the situation we have. We have uh, two charges at some distance. So I have a Q1 here. And I think we are assuming that uh, Q1 is either so heavy or that, oh, well, I guess it says here, it is a fixed. So Q1 doesn't move. So you don't have to worry about any kinetic energy of Q1. So all you have to worry about is Q2 moving from this distance to some farther away distance um, here, maybe, uh, Q2. So this is what I would like to call my snapshot one. And I'm going to write down expressions that relate to this snapshot one. And this is what I'm going to call my snapshot two. And I'm going to write down my relationships that relate to this snapshot two. Now, um, as a quick review reminder, um, we are using conservation of energy, or sorry, we are using conservation law principle to uh, tackle this question. And when you are using conservation principles uh, to solve any question, the first thing you have to walk through is um, um, consideration of which conservation law applies. When you are dealing with dynamics, there will be three quantities that could potentially be conserved. Energy, uh, mechanical energy, uh, momentum, and angular momentum. And in this case, angular momentum will be useless because you start out with a zero angular momentum, you end with a zero angular momentum. It doesn't really tell you anything new. Now, in this setup, momentum is not going to be conserved because it has to do with this um, charge Q1 being fixed at the origin. And this act of fixing, uh, fixing must involve some external force being applied to Q1. So that external force is going to change momentum. Momentum is not conserved. So finally, we only have energy, mechanical energy and uh, electrostatic force is conservative force. So it'll conserve mechanical energy. So, so we are going to um, start out with that. We start out with the statement saying that total energy at point one is equal to total energy at point two, because you say uh, you recognize the mechanical energy is conserved in this setup. So once you recognize that, then the rest is you break down these expressions into its part. It has a few parts. Um, so it, it, well, it has two parts. It has potential energy, kinetic energy. At snapshot one, because you are releasing it from rest, it will have zero kinetic energy. So uh, oh, sorry, let me write this out. It, kinetic energy at point one plus potential energy at point one is equal to kinetic energy at point two plus potential energy at point two. So as I was saying, kinetic energy at this point will be zero because you are releasing it from rest. The kinetic energy at point two, it's, uh, uh, well, it's not going to be zero and that will help us to find how fast it's moving at snapshot two. Now, you have to be a little bit careful with the 
potential energies because I think in physics 4a we are used to setting or trying to set potential energy at one of the two points equal to zero. Here, because we are using this uh, universal reference point where potential energy is zero at infinity out, um, we, we are not going to be able to do that. So we'll just have to write out the expression for potential energy at each location and we'll compute the difference and that difference will help us get to the answer we want. So let me uh, do this. I'm going to first uh, write out what this kinetic energy is because this kinetic energy has expression one half mass of charge two um, times the speed of charge two squared. And what we are looking for is this value of V2. So let me first solve for that before I write out in detail what the potential energy of one and two are. So um, let me first write a version of this equation where it's been solved for one half m2 v2 squared. So one half m2 v2 squared is equal to, move this over, potential energy of one minus potential energy of two. Okay, so now I can try to solve for V2 by multiplying both sides by 2 over M2. And then to that, just take the square root of the whole thing. So after I do that to the left-hand side, my left-hand side will be just V2. And my right-hand side will be 2 over M2 times this difference of potential energy, PE1 minus PE2 square rooted. And I think I'm going to do this. I already worked out an expression for potential energy uh, at snapshot one uh, that, uh, well, I have a numerical value for it even. And I think I'm just going to reuse the same expression and just change a few things so that it becomes a potential energy at point two. And then I'll do the uh, plug in the rest of the numbers. So uh, let me use O from alpha. Let's see here. Uh, I'm going to take this expression I have here. That's going to be uh, equal to my potential energy at point snapshot one. I'm going to subtract a version of it. And as I'm subtracting it, what is the charges remain the same? What changes the distance? It goes from 3.6 centimeter to 8.4 centimeter. So let me put in 8.4 centimeter. So that difference, I think, did that close? No. Uh, so from here to here, that difference uh, is the difference of the potential energies. <laughs> let me multiply this by 2 divided by the mass. Um, that's a 1.5 gram. I'm going to let Mathematica do the unit conversion times, okay. And to this whole expression, I'm going to take square root. Square root of the entire thing. Press enter. And I'll double check to make sure that Mathematica understood my input correctly. And then go from there. Assuming grams for gram, okay. Oops, uh, that looks wrong. Uh, because the gram should be on the denominator. So let me just uh, fix that. More parentheses, just to disambiguate the expression. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, 2 divided by 1.5 grams times all of these stuff. Yeah, this is stuff. Okay, that looks right. And then it says 97 meters per second. Okay. So that should be it. So hopefully this is this is a um, timely mechanics review, how to use conservation law principles to answer questions like this. That's this is frankly the reason you cover those things in uh, physics for a. Um, so.